Hey everybody, it's good to see you back once again. It's time we finish this engine side panel build. So we have to put this oil filter bump out into this right hand side panel. And this is a tough one because, I mean, it doesn't look like much, but we've, we've got this rolled edge on the top. So we're bending metal two different ways. This has to stretch, that has to stretch, this has to compress. This all stretches, this has to stay flat. There's, there's a lot of different things happening all at once right there and we get one shot to make it right. So yesterday we did behind the scenes episode number 86 now and we've got the backup forming die made. We've got the driver made. So we experimented with some scrap. This was test number one and it was all right but it had a few issues. So we went and modified the opening on the backup die. We did test number two, which was better, but I still wasn't completely happy with it. So we performed a few more modifications to the driver. We did test number three, and I finally stumbled upon the shape and the contour and the support and everything that I wanted. So I believe we have a workable setup to put that bump out into the main panel so let's just do some damage see what happens I'm gonna throw a lot of heat up along that fence Hear it creaking? It's moving. Anyway, throw a lot of heat up along this top edge along that fence because we're asking a lot of that rolled edge. That's gonna have to do more than the flat. bit of a wrinkle we need to work out right here. See what that looks like.
So far, so good. Okay, back in the shop now. I cleaned it up and it's looking really good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. When we compare it to the factory stamping, I think we just about created a clone. That's as close as I'm gonna be able to get it with the means that I have. I also took a grinder and I took a little bit of material off of this top rolled edge to create some more clearance between the side panel and the filter can. I also cut that bump in right there. It's another relief where you can even see it in the factory pieces. Helps that side panel to clear that engine breather a little bit more. And the reason why I wanted a little bit more space between the panel and the oil filter is because of this witness mark you can see that original one piece side panel was pretty hard up against that filter can for a while. I actually started wearing into it. And I don't want to create a leak right there. That would be big problems. And yeah, this panel is first generation piece and you can see that top rolled edge, they left full width even after they stamped it out. So they didn't create any extra clearance there at all. But you look at this old right hand upper panel, which would have been about one model year later in production. You can see how that definitely gets narrower through there. I think senior sawing on something outside that definitely gets narrower through there. So I believe that was a, uh, that contact was on their radar at that time. So that's why I chose just to afford myself the same amount of clearance on the new panel. So that being done, I think we're ready to do a test fit on this piece. See how everything lines in. Looks good. We do have clearance on that filter can. It's not touching. Our cut in lines in well with that crankcase breather. Nice consistent gap around there. Oil drain for the starting engine. Perfect fit on the bump end right there. Centered up. That should catch, yeah, it'll go in far enough to catch anything coming out of the plug. Seam line is looking excellent. All that lines in right where it should. Good alignment, good gap right there. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think that looks just about factory. Next order of business is to form and weld in this round stiffener tube that runs just inside of that upper rolled edge. All the factory panels have them. There it is in the first gen, but you can see it has to be bumped in right here and it has to actually take a dive plus be bumped in where that oil filter can goes. We need clearance on that breather and that filter. Even the straight sided panels have them. There it is in place on that one. And I've actually already got it welded in place on this left side panel because it was so easy. That's just a straight run, straight line job. I got that knocked out of the way right off the bat. So what I'm using for it is the same half inch outside diameter, 16th inch thick wall steel line that I used to make the fuel line. I still had enough of this left over that, well, it fits the bill. It's the proper dimension. So that will be welded in there. I left it a little bit long to start with because we need to form in the bump there and then collapse it in right there, get it fitting those profiles. So. Let's form it to fit. And here's my setup. We're using the same backup die that we used for forming the panel. And Senior actually had a really good idea. He says, why don't you just take one of the scrap pieces you were practicing with and set that on top of the, the forming die and then use that as like a second layer forming die. So that honestly, that was way simpler than the things I was conjuring up <laughs> between my ears already. So that's what we did. We just have, I used the blank that I was most happy with for, uh, yeah, we'll just, let that thin wall tube just mash right into there. We've got the masher already made right here. And I put four little clamps on for guides because when you mash that down, 
without clamps in place, each end is going to want to kick up. And, well, with two clamps above it, that's going to, should, anyway, keep it straight when I mash it. And then with another two, keeping it tight against the fence, if I depress that center and it wants to pull tube in from either side, in theory, those should just guide it and keep it all relatively square and maybe save me a step after the fact, having to straighten everything back up. I don't know if it's going to work. Let's just try it. Yeah, it works great. <laughs> that was a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be. I think I need to go a little bit more. Let's just see where that gets us. As we sight down the tube, I think that worked pretty well. Put it up here and see. Yeah, we'll clear all around right there. So next thing we have to do is press this bump in over here. That doesn't have to dive on the bottom because we're just on flat panel there. So pretty sure I can form that in just cold with the press. Don't worry, you're probably safe where you sit. Me, not so much, but I don't get too worried about that. Okay. That'll do just fine. Let's weld. Okay, we've got the rod welded in place that's stitched in well. And I, I'll tell you right now from the bump ins and the bump outs and the bead that we rolled and the stiffener rod in there, that makes for one rigid panel. I can't even deflect that thing. It'd take a lot to bend it. So we're almost done everybody. We're coming right down to the end. The final item that we have to address, well, series of items, is this one inch hole right here, one inch hole right there. Spacing is the same front to back on the left hand and right hand panels. So you can see I've already got them measured out and the pilot is drilled. We go four and three eighths from the back, two inches down on center, two inches from the front, two inches down on center. Each one is a one inch diameter hole. The reason for those is if there were louvered side panels going from the hood down to these, um, these two pieces, this is where the latches for those louvers would hook in, for those louvered panels, I should say. They were in all these, whether they had louvered panels or not, so it's an accent feature. We just have to put in. Let's get it done. There's what we started with, and here's what we made.
There, it was a lot of work, but here is the factory option two-piece engine side panel. Done on both sides. Yeah, like I said before, if louvered panels would hang from the hood and extend down, that is where the latch would hook right there and right there, but can't be happier with the fit. I just love how we just nail it right between all those transfer pump bolts, right where it needs to be. Tuck in behind just perfect. And for once here, <laughs> for once, you always get a little bit of warpage when you weld. For once, the warpage actually worked in our favor. I bet I gained another good 16th of an inch clearance on that filter can after I welded it. You sight down them, they still look straight. Not even gonna touch it. We're just, uh, we're enjoying our luck today. Good standoff there. Yep, catch would go there and there. They don't even rattle. And it's such a, it's such a good fit. And look at this, there's, there's almost no deflection in that panel at all. So I'm not worried about it coming in far enough to rattle against that filter can. But, oh, one other question too. A lot of viewers have asked, why is there that secondary hole in that side iron when you only need the one to line in with that drain tap? I don't know, but that that other hole is in every parts manual scan of every 5J serial number reference range that I have. So it could have been something that they put in place you know, from the start because they were thinking maybe of an engineering design change that never came about or maybe originally was that they deleted, but once they already had the blueprints, they didn't bother to remove that because it was inconsequential. We just replicated everything here, right down to the last detail, even all the holes that don't need to be used for this tractor. So that pretty much, well not pretty much, that wraps up all of the lighter duty tin work that we had to recreate. And um, I'm currently having a piece of C-channel custom rolled to make the front bumper for this. I was able to determine the radius the material and it's probably going to be another good week before I get that here and until I get that piece of rolled channel I can't work on the other side brackets that are going to join the side irons to that front bumper so we're kind of in a holding pattern on the rest of the front bumper job until I get that rolled um, chunk of uh, C channels so in the meantime I think I'm going to transition on into paint there's a whole lot of that stuff <laughs> needs to be put back right so we're gonna do that just kind of as a filler while we're waiting for that piece of steel to come in. So as always, everyone, thanks for watching. I know these side panels were a lot of work, it took a lot of time to get it all done, but it's what it had to be. So hope to see you all back again.